Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm still playing Fields of Fire and it's now turn number four here we go and well I think we're doing basically fine we managed to control more or less these two lower rows here there's only a sniper fire here in the gully draw, but that's it. Um, and here is still a potential contact marker in the woods. But apart from that we're doing good. Not too many casualties. So, yeah, I think it's okay. Um, one thing though is important. And... Um, I was corrected here by a viewer, uh, Bruce, he told me that there was an error, a mistake here, this um, heavy weapon symbol should be a grenade symbol, and I didn't know that. So, um, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I will try to keep that in mind for the future. Okay, so... Well, the next thing we're going to do is, of course, we're going to try to advance here a little bit. Another point is uh, the COHQ. We need to bring them a little bit more into the center now, because um, if my platoon HQs move forward, then um, they are no longer connected um, to the COHQ because phone lines or the phone is only connected to an adjacent card um, or if there is a phone line in between these. So I think it's a good idea uh, to move a little more into the middle of the board uh, because I guess I don't have enough phone lines uh, although I'm not sure about that, but um, I want to make sure, I, I simply want to make sure that there's always communication possible between all, the, all of them. Okay, so first let's see, we have the friendly higher HQ event phase once again, and there is nothing happening. And then we have friendly command phase and we draw for the COHQ and that is a 3 but because he's green he only has a 2 and that's another advantage if we bring him here somewhere on the map under cover we are allowed to add one because of the command draw modifier under cover so we have two points here. Okay, so I decided now to move here into the strong building with the COHQ. And then I think I'm going to activate third platoon. Okay. Uh, let me see, I still got one point, one saved command point left. Maybe it's now time to spend that. I could, for example, order the first, maybe that guy, maybe that's not such a bad idea. First, second platoon. To move in here. Mm, yeah. Okay, so now on this card here we have this automatic weapons fire marker. Uh, it was before the heavy fire marker, but this is no longer the case because this is not a heavy fire. Uh, so the strongest 
One is this light machine gun, which now shoots onto this card. And now what I'm going to do is, um, this COHQ will get an exposed marker, by the way. Um, <coughs> he will order 1st, 2nd platoon. To infiltrate that card and I think this is possible simply because um, there is a volume of fire marker onto that card you can infiltrate a card if one or both of the cards so the card where you come from or the card where you go to has a volume of fire marker and I think this is also possible if it's a friendly volume of fire and if I will give a ceased fire order later to remove these markers. But I think still it should be possible to infiltrate there. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, because the unit is line, I'm allowed to draw two cards and I need an infiltrate symbol which we have here. This is pretty cool. So we draw two cards here. And this allows me now to move that unit into that card without being exposed. And I can move that unit under cover. There are the foxholes here. So that's a very good thing. But remember this is only possible if one of the two cards Uh, has a volume of fire marker on it. Okay, so that was pretty good. And now the COHQ doesn't have any more commands left. And then it's the third platoon HQ. And we can now activate this guy. Oh, well, that's cool. He's got five commands and let me see, I think he's here somewhere. Yeah, here he is. So because he's green we have to subtract one, but because he's under cover we can add one so he can use his five commands. This is third platoon, so he's at six. Okay, so now we can actually we can do something here. Well, I think first the whole platoon will move here to that Orchard Grove. Okay, so they're exposed now. This guy was there before, so he's not exposed. Okay, and then, uh, that co did cost us two points. And now we can try to spot this guy here, the sniper. And this is definitely not going to be easy. We can order, well, I don't know, let's order, for example, that unit here to do so. And... I'm pretty sure we can only draw one card. It's a line unit, so there is no uh, there is no modifier here. But the target is under cover, so normally we have a two, so it's a one. Then he's a sniper, which makes it a zero, and uh, yeah, that's it. So. Uh, but the minimum cards we can draw is always one, so we can draw one card here. Let's hope for the best. And yeah, awesome, we made it. That's cool. Okay, so we managed to spot this guy here. A sniper. That's pretty important because um, a spotted sniper will always move out of line of sight, or will try to move out of line of sight of the um, US units which will remove the volume of fire here so this guy now is safe 
which is pretty awesome. Okay, and so that was another action point. And then I'm going to order, give another action away and order these two units here. Uh, where are they? are they? The fire teams, these two, to make a rally attempt to constitute a new unit. Okay, fire teams are supposed to be green. So we are only allowed to draw one card and this time we were not lucky and I'm thinking about exerting actually but hmm. anything else I can do right now I don't think so <clears throat> well I could send this guy here Hmm. Not sure what is better actually. I uh, could also move here onto the hatch row and uh, maybe this is not such a bad idea. On the other hand, then I'll be, and the volume of fire of the sniper goes on him, which is definitely not great. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is, I simply move on here. I order him to move in here, although I don't really like that so much, but, okay, and he's exposed then. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I guess. Guess this is it then. Fine. So then we come to the initiative segment. Okay, yeah, that was. That were all the actions of the third platoon, I guess. And then we come to the initiative segment. And we start with the EXO. So, he will gain one command point. And, well, he's here. Hmm. And I'm absolutely not sure what to do. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to order these guys here, second 60 millimeters, to move here onto that hatch row bucket. I can do this with the XO. So he moves in here. And he's exposed then. He's part of the first platoon. But as far as I understand it, the XO can also give the first platoon orders. Okay, and that was basically then his action. And, uh, and it's the first sergeant. And he also gains one command point. And he's up here on that hill. And well, there is until now not a lot he can do. I think he will simply stay there and save that command point. Okay, now we come to the first platoon. Let's see how much they get. That's pretty good. It's uh, four command points, and let's see where first platoon HQ is. This is second platoon here. I think they are actually here. Damn it. 
Oh man. Yeah, here we go. This is first platoon HQ. Problem is it's still pinned. So but okay, I gotta check that. Okay, so because pinned he only has very limited options, but what he can do is he can actually move from cover and that's what he will do. He will move out of his cover and move to these guys here. The problem is that although they are all on the same card, as long as he is under cover he can not communicate with the other guys. And uh, he also cannot communicate now for example with this one here. So that's pretty bad. But the other ones of the first platoon are not in cover or these and also first weapons they are not in cover so now when he's out of cover he can actually communicate with the other ones on that card except for this one here second first platoon and now he can order them to move onto this card because um, basically your movement is limited if you're pinned, but um, you can move onto the staging area or a friendly occupied cart without any volume of fire. And this is the case here with the hetero buckage. So now we're gonna spend, um, let me see, well, how many exactly? We had four points. So. Here we are. We, sp we did spend one to move. Ah, I see the point now. I think that makes me... Ah, I think if I moved onto that card to these other guys, I cannot move again. Yeah, that's a problem actually, because I can only move once per turn. I could order them all now to move in here and stay myself there, I think. But uh, I don't know if this makes any sense. I don't think so, actually. Okay, so the problem is indeed now that he moved out of cover, which gives him now the possibility to communicate with the other guys, but he is exposed. So that means he cannot move a second time during that turn. So, I think what I'm going to simply do is nothing. I'm going to save my other commands, try to get that whole platoon together again and then move on in the next turn with them. Okay. So, yeah, that was first platoon. And now we're going to activate uh, second platoon. Okay, the activation here is completed, and now we activate second platoon. <clears throat> ah, that's bad. Yeah, that's really. That's just zero because this is an initiative. So that's a zero. Luckily, second platoon has three points left save them so this can be now pretty important and I think actually second platoon was yeah this was second platoon here so we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use three of these uh, we're gonna use two of these um, of these three points and move with the whole platoon here onto that hatch row and then ah yeah I think ah just just a second here yeah I think that's fine so let me see we need that exposed marker okay so eh. 
here we are now. Okay, that's 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 fine. And now another important thing because there is a, here we got first second platoon and we want to get rid of the fire of the friendly fire here. So it's important that uh, the first platoon HQ he now orders uh, these people on these cards to cease fire. And here they don't have to be in communication. Don't ask me why, it's a simple rule. Every unit will cease fire um, even if they're not in communication. So also the units under cover will do this. So now the crossfire goes away and the automatic weapons go away. All that stays now is um, small arms fire. Um, because of him, he's also still firing onto this card. But uh, I hope he will find a, a point in the general initiative phase to move on. Okay, yeah, I think the so second platoon now moved onto that card that cost him two points. Well, let me see. I mean, yeah, that's it then. Okay, fine. So, I guess we're done here now. Now we come to the general initiative phase and... Oh, come on! That's bad! But... Ah, damn it! Zero! That's really nasty! So that means now that we have... We shoot on our own people. Ah, damn it! Okay, so that wasn't, wasn't exactly good. First of all, we're, we're now here under friendly fire. Well, at least we can remove this one because we ceased fire from this card. And second of all, we cannot uh, search for cover here. So that was definitely not so great. Anyway, um, what next? We draw for the enemy higher HQ event. And yes, there is one. Let's hope it's not too bad. Draw another card. And that's an 8. So let's see what we got here. It's in the briefing booklet. Here we are. And that is the enemy high edge given. Fall back. Move all unpinned units. Straight back one yard. Uh, one card. Okay, so, uh, well, for now that simply means that this guy here, the sniper, will move back. And I'm pretty sure for that he will get an exposed marker. Oh, and by the way, at the time we spotted him, there was of course now a fire onto this card here. I forgot that. Okay, so now on this card, which is empty, we have small arms fire from these guys. They went onto that card, then spotted him. And then here, the fire teams, they now fire onto that cart. And then this guy did fall back. Um, there is no volume of fire from here onto this cart because he's still shooting at this cart. And this guy also doesn't fire because he was before here and then he was ordered to move in here. And when you move to an adjacent cart, you don't... Uh, you cease fire. So he's now here without shooting. Okay. Yeah, I think this is it. So that was the 
Um, the enemy higher HQ event. And then we come to the enemy activity check segment. And we have to... Wait a second, that is, that is wrong. It's not pinned. It's exposed, of course, not pinned. We have to check now um, what the sniper does. Okay, actually I forgot something. I think this guy is standing here. Third, third platoon. He will now shoot on this card, on the card of the sniper. Um, because he moved and he's now in line of sight. So I think that triggered the fire from that card. And uh, well, that might be a good thing. And this is small arms fire. Is that here we go okay nice and we can remove the volume of fire of the sniper here okay so now this is a little complicated usually the sniper during the enemy activity check the sniper would the spotted sniper would fall back one card but because of the enemy uh, HQ event it already did so so um, <clears throat> and because enemies are also restricted by the normal movement rules uh, rules he cannot move twice in this turn so that means now during the activity check he will not fall back and he will stay in line of sight of this guy which is uh, actually pretty bad because he will shoot and he will shoot here so we have a volume of fire now here and that is very very bad because I'm pretty sure that will hit him and um, uh, so we can now flip this here volume of fire goes now in both directions okay and uh, guess that's it then. Yeah, that was the enemy activity check. And then we come to the mutual capture and retreat phase. And now there's actually something we can do because now we can capture this guy because he's on the same card as one of my people and there is no other enemy unit with him. So we simply can take him as a prisoner and well that's basically it. Okay, and now it's the combat phase again. So we have to evaluate the potential contact markers now. And you do this in alphabetical order. So now our first potential contact is here. Potential contact B. And the current activity is contact. So as you can see here, B, we have to draw five cards to check if we have contact. One, two, three, four, and we have to reshuffle. Okay, so we got to check one more card to see if there's contact, and there isn't. That's well, in a way, that's good. Problem is, he already has that sniper so he will be hit anyway but it's a good thing it's our first potential contact B which is resolved that's a good thing and then we have here potential contact C so let me see we have contact so we gotta draw three cards so that is one, two, three. Wow, well, we're damn lucky here. Also, no contact. So this is good. So I guess overall, 
even if this might be now a bad thing here, I think we did fine during this turn. Okay, anyway, um, now we come to the combat effect phase and yeah, we'll see now what happens. This is now the bad part. So we got a plus one, which is more or less ridiculous. We got a minus three for the sniper and a minus two because we're exposed. So we get a minus four, which is the worst possible result. Let's see what we got. Whoa, we're alive. I don't believe that. Again, we're lucky. Must be a pretty bad sniper, actually. So we were really lucky here. That is amazing. It didn't hit me again. It was the same before. He also missed. So I'm really lucky. Can't believe it. I'm pinned, which is not too bad actually. Just a second. I need that pin marker. Oh my god. That was great. Okay, cool. And now, if I'm lucky, maybe I can actually kill the sniper. Um, he's now under small arms and exposed. So overall he's at zero. He's got a plus two for the woods and a minus two because exposed. So he's at zero. So let's see. Uh, that's a pin. So this is not that good but it's a start. And let me see now. Okay so now Sniper is pinned and that means now that uh, the volume of fire goes away of the sniper and instead it's an all pinned marker here and the same on the other card because he's also pinned that unit here so we remove the small arms marker here and instead place an all pinned volume of fire which gives a plus two, so it's not very likely that we will hit each other. Which is a little sad, but okay, at least this, this sniper uh, is kind of neutralized. So we can say, again, we had a very lucky turn here. Um, no additional contact, and the sniper didn't hit me. So that was pretty awesome, actually. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the results here. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm I'm done for now. So uh the plan for the next one for the next turns has to be to get into this farm. Maybe we can find a some strong cover there, which would be great. Another strong building maybe or so. So we have a good defensive position here in the farm. And uh, maybe here into the foxholes of the hatch row. It's also possible. And then we have to organize first, um, first platoon again. We have to bring them all out of cover so that the platoon HQ can command them forward. Again, maybe here into the woods or wherever. Yeah, so that's... That's the plan for the next turn. I think we're doing fine until now. We have five, uh, we have uh, six rounds left, and I think it's okay. Okay, uh, well, hope to see you in my next video. Until then, bye. And sorry, I just, I forgot the cleanup phase. This is, of course, something we want to do. So we got to remove these markers here. And uh, we have here an exposed marker, which should also go away. And we have these exposed markers over here. Uh, okay. And what about that one? Yeah, I think this is... No, that's a... Ah, yeah, that's a pin marker, which goes actually also away. Because this unit wasn't hit. And remember, at the end of the, of the turn, if a unit was not hit during that turn you are allowed to remove that pin marker so that allows me also to remove these pin markers here 
and that exposed marker here. Yeah, okay, here we go. And then mm, finally we can remove this exposed marker. And I think that's it now. Mm. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, I think we're done here. Um, yeah, so bye. And actually, you're back once again. I forgot here the small arms fire. So uh, we have here a plus three, the woods, the foxholes. So that gives them a three because they infiltrated this card, they are not exposed. And yeah, now they have to be a little bit lucky not to get hit by friendly fire. And that's a three plus three, so that is a miss. Okay, great. So now we are finally done here. Bye.